Swing and a miss. Disappointing turn of events for the U.S. economy's second quarter review. GDP rose by 6.5%, considerably less than the 8.4% than had been estimated. President Biden went on to tweet after the quarterly review, America is on the move again, and today's new GDP numbers put our economy back at pre-pandemic levels. Make no mistake, this growth is no accident. It's a direct result of our efforts to deliver economic relief to families, small businesses, and communities across the country. Hmm. The only growth I feel like we're seeing these days is in prices. We got the host of Trish Intel with us now, Trish Regan. She joins us. Trish, great to see you. Hey, good to see you, Buck. So a tough one here for GDP, given what was expected and what was forecast. Uh, Given the amount of businesses that have been shut down due to limitations, specifically not having enough workers, right, that that's a big problem here. What are the biggest factors? I mean, that's one of them. What, What else matters? Why didn't we hit the number that was projected on GDP side? Well, there's still some supply issue things going on, right? The inventory levels are are very challenged right now, in part because so many places shut down, right? And maybe they're back up and running, or maybe they're not. Maybe they can't find workers, and that's why they can't get the factory back to where it was. And so there's this backlog, right, of inventory. And so there's some truth in that when they keep citing it. But I'm amazed by that tweet because it's completely tone deaf to everything that's going on. I get it. They have to spin it, Buck, and they're going to spin it and spin it and spin it. But I'm like, is this like Alice in Wonderland, right? Everything is upside down because I'm reading that tweet and Steny Horrier had one out. They're all out there, right, trying to spin this thing. And I'm like, wait a second, guys. This came in far worse than expected, still better than 6% growth, and I'll take it. (laughs) When he says we're back at pre-pandemic levels, well, duh, we've already been back at pre-pandemic levels. In fact, that recession that we we went through was actually very deep, but very short-lived. And it's pretty typical when you have something like that happen that you bounce back in a massive way, right? Because it was that bad. So therefore now it should look that good in comparison. And so the fact that they only get 6% and change growth when everybody's anticipating 8.4% or maybe even higher, that's not good, Buck. It's not good. And I'm telling you, we're not gonna be able to sustain this economy at this rate. You know, we have a a graph here, the United States GDP between 2005 and present day to show folks the changes. I I, I mean, Trish, it it seems like we were in an artificial recession insofar as it was just a function of shutdowns and, yes, the pandemic uh, along with it. So shouldn't the economy, you know, there was a bounce back that initially happened, but shouldn't the economy be in a real clear uptrend here? I mean, is it... Is there anything you can point to from the Biden administration side in terms of the decisions they've been making that is clearly slowing this thing down? Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, but you know, you hand out $600 a week stimulus checks from the federal government, right? Combined with another 600 you may get from state and suddenly nobody's going to work again. Now I know those have been reduced and significantly reduced, right? In a lot of conservative led states in an effort to try and get people back into the workplace. But I'm sorry, you know, sitting on unemployment kind of beats washing dishes, so to speak. And so as a result, Buck, you don't have enough people going in and and getting jobs, right? It's too attractive to stay home. There's something called an opportunity cost. The opportunity cost is, you know what, they've got to figure out childcare in many situations, especially because schools have been shut down. They've got to pay more money to put gas in their tank. They got to get food for, you know, lunch at work. And plus there's just the headache of having to go to work every day. I mean, a lot of people are making a very conscious, very um, strategic decision, shall we say, not to go. And that's an overhang on the economy, right? Because if you're a small business owner, you want to get things back up and running, but you can't because you can't find labor. And so there's no labor, which is an increasingly a drag on this whole supply and inventory issue, right? Combined with, you know, rising prices, which don't forget what that does to the economy. I mean, we're going into what I would call a mass inflation era. And, you know, Buck, I've been talking about this since the second COVID stimulus check by none other than Donald Trump. Don't forget when he did his second round. And then, of course, we had to get the third round from Biden. And I've been saying all along, you can't just print money like this. The Federal Reserve, meanwhile, coming out yesterday and saying, we're going to keep on printing, 
right? Because they have an excuse now. Effectively, COVID has become an excuse to hand out money, whether it be via the Biden administration and the $1.2 trillion infrastructure plan, right? We're gonna get courtesy of some Republicans who apparently have completely forgot about their conservative roots. Fiscal conservatism is no longer. So you've got all that spending combined with the Fed spending. And look, I don't know. I mean, 28 trillion in debt, and we're gonna have upwards of 30 by the end of the year. I, I don't know where this goes because we can't afford it. You mentioned the inflation numbers, Trish, as they are already uh, ticking up. CNBC uh, highlighted the increased inflation numbers this way. Consumer prices increased 5.4% in June from a year earlier, the biggest monthly gain since August of 2008, going back to what was happening when the economy was obviously in really rough shape or about to be. And uh, food and energy prices were also up substantially, 0.8% and 1.5% respectively. Gasoline index rose 2.5% in June, is up over 45.1% over the last 12 months. Food has increased 2.4% in the last year. People have less purchasing power now, don't they? I mean, especially if you're reliant on wages and you're an hourly worker or you're just barely making ends meet paying your mortgage, these percentages add up pretty quickly. Sure. I mean, diapers, I don't have I don't have babies in diapers, but a lot of people do. And they're kind of, you know, the, a big strength in our society, right? Young families, diapers are up 14 percent in the last year. I mean, all these companies have come out and said we're raising prices. You saw John Casmatidis, who runs Gristades, a big, big famous grocery store chain in New York. He came out and said, guess what? Expect 11 to 14% of an increase on grocery store shelves by next year. Look, and it's not like, to your point, wages are going up simultaneously. One thing that the previous administration really doesn't get any credit for is the fact that median wages grew for the first time in decades under the Trump administration's economic policies. You know, look, under Obama and Biden, Median wages went nowhere. Annual growth was nowhere, less than 2%. But there was inflation, certainly in asset prices, right? You saw the stock stock market go up, up, up and away. And so I think we're seeing a little bit of deja vu here, except the added component of mass inflation on the consumer price scale. So this is not, you know, for him to kind of rejoice in this, I get it. This is what he's supposed to do. He's a politician. He's the president. And they're all going to rejoice in this. But the reality is nobody should be happy with where our economy is heading and what it's been doing under this administration.